That's the toughest act I've had to follow since coming out after Florence Henderson and eight dancing boys. Wow. I love what you said about Seal Protection Act. It reminded me of No Child Left Behind and some of the other catchphrases that mean the opposite of what they say. This morning as I exited the elevator, I happened to see the big TV screen and it said the United States is 32nd in education in the world. Did anybody see that? And then it said we're behind Saudi Arabia and Uzbekistan. And I remember when I was a homeschooling mom, I pulled my daughter out of school in preschool after they sent home the note on the day that I was going to be a really great mom and make her carrot juice instead of just pouring some soy milk in the thermos. They said, your, your child does not have one of the food groups in her lunchbox. And that got me thinking, you know what, even I can teach kindergarten. Well, it went on all the way and she is now a, a married 29-year-old vegan stunt woman. It all worked out. but. Uh, when I homeschooled, I always had to defend the education because I was outside the norm. The way that we live, the way that we think, the way that we believe is still outside the norm, less than it used to be, and so we're on the defensive. And that's why hearing these incredible stories just gives me so much hope and power. If you can go up against what you've been up against, I can go into Starbucks and say, you really shouldn't be out of soy milk. It's all good. Well, I'm going to finish this up today, not having done anything this dramatic. But you know what? There's a place for all of us. And I'm sure that the animals are grateful that we're all here. As I said earlier, my name is Victoria Moran. This is my latest baby. This is my 11th book. It's called Main Street Vegan. I'll tell you a little bit about how that came about in a minute. Thank you. I've been around this movement for a very long time. And I want to tell a story about direct action that had nothing to do with an animal unless humans count. And it's about Alex Hershaft. When I was in my early 30s and my daughter that I talked about was four years old, I was widowed very suddenly, very tra tragically. And I got so many cards and letters People really reached out, they were very kind, they were sympathetic, they said, let me know if there's anything I can do. One person called me and said, do you want to move to DC? You can work for farm, you can live in my house, you can bring your daughter. And that was Alex Hershaft. I didn't, maybe I should have, opted to stay near family and, and go my own way. But you know, we hear sometimes, you guys don't care about people. You only care about animals, or as we would say, other animals. That is so not true. We care. And Alex cared, and I will always remember that. So I just want to tell you a little bit of the story of Main Street Vegan. I went to an animal rights fundraiser. It was a PETA fundraiser. We have some PETA people in here. And you know, when you've been around this a while, you've seen the videos. It's like, all right, all right, I've seen, I know. But sometimes your heart is just a little bit more open than usual. And this particular night, I went and I saw the videos and all I wanted to do in all the world was write Ingrid Newkirk a check for one hundred thousand dollars and say here go fix something but it would have bounced <laughs> so in the subway on the way home i was just feeling like all i wanted to do was help help more than i'd helped in the previous 40 years i want to do something what can i do and god spoke to me which happens sometimes, and God or my guardian angel or whoever's hanging out in there said Victoria, and I said yes, and, and God said, you're supposed to write a book and call it Main Street Vegan, and it's supposed to be geared to that person out in Kansas City that you were such a long time ago when this was new and weird and strange, and not only was there no soy milk at Starbucks, there was no Starbucks, and help them see it's not that difficult. 
And it's not just a nice idea for somebody else. It's a really nice idea for them. And then God said it's supposed to be 40 little chapters because people don't have a lot of patience with reading long things. And you need to put a recipe at the end of each one because for some reason, people are into food and watching this food network. So I said, okay. And I told my literary agent we needed to change course from what we'd been doing. And what could she say? I mean, it came from God. So, um, so we sold the book, a wonderful publisher. And as soon as they bought it, they said, we hate Main Street. Well, my lovely friend Martin Rose said later, well, five years ago, they would have hated vegan. Do you notice that the only people who hate vegan these days are vegans? Has anybody noticed this? Do you hear? I don't say vegan. No, no, I don't. I, I say plant-based. Now, the American diet is meat-based. That leaves no room for the French fries and the mojitos and the other things that people consume. I'm not plant-based. I'm vegan. That means a lot. I'm not plant-based because I'm ethics-based. I don't want to be based on a plant. I want to eat a plant, and I want to eat green plants, and I want to be really healthy, and I want to look fabulous until I'm 102 so that people can say, do you see that 100-year-old woman and how good she looks? She's a vegan. <laughs> so that's what I want to do with plants. But vegan was not the problem with the book. They said, we hate Main Street. It sounds like the Tea Party. So I tried to work with other titles, wasn't really liking it very much. And as fate would have it, I had a miracle. You know, when you are set out to do extraordinary good, extraordinary things happen. So I'm walking up Broadway in New York City, and there's Michael Moore. These things happen. It's New York City. Well, I knew that he liked one of my earlier books, and not wanting to be a fan, I just handed my card to the woman who was with him and said he liked one of my books, tell him hello. So I turned with my husband and walked on up Broadway, and within 30 seconds I hear, Victoria! And I am being pursued by Michael Moore, who says we need to talk. We need to talk about food. And we talked about food at a bus stop for about an hour. And he said, I'll call you. And I thought, in my dreams. But guess what? He called me. And we started hanging out and talking. And one day I mentioned the book I'm working on was supposed to be called Main Street Vegan. And publisher didn't like it. Publisher said it sounded like the tea party. And he said, Main Street Vegan. That's perfect. Because people expect hippie street vegan or Whole Food Street vegan. But Main Street vegan, it's like to kill a mockingbird. <laughs> and I said, you think so? I think so. They think it sounds like the tea party. He said, let me talk to them. The most amazing experience of my life, second only to when Paul McCartney bought me a scotch and coke when I was 17, was a three-way call with Michael Moore and my editor and me and listening to him tell her, it is the Tea Party and it's the occupiers and it's everybody in between because everybody's Main Street. Everybody claims the status of the common man and this is a new idea whose time has come. The publisher gave me my title. Now I know those of you who know your animal rights history will say, but wait a minute. Michael Moore, he's anti-animal rights. He not only eats everything under the sun, he was on record as saying we shouldn't care about the chickens in the cages because there are more important things to care about. Well, guess what? Today, he cares about the chickens in the cages, and he's on record with that. He's not all the way with us. He has not eaten red meat for two years and 10 months, and that's because he had a spiritual experience over a piece of bison. They brought him this buffalo steak thing at a restaurant. He was looking forward to eating it, and the presence of the being that this had been a part of was so present, he couldn't eat it. And he thought he was getting the flu or something and would be normal the next day, but he wasn't. And he wasn't normal the next day 
or the next day, and then he read Eating Animals. And then he read Main Street Vegan in manuscript form, gave it a lovely, uh, thank you, um, endorsement on the back. And then he read Meat is for Pussies. I didn't name it, but it's a really great book. <laughs> and all this to say, this is one human being out there in the world who is changing. Can we crack a tough nut? Yeah, people change. Now, we can go to the people on the anti with this great information and get them to change. The one thing we don't want to go to people who have a completely philosophically different way of viewing life is for advice and information. I had two people yesterday come up to me with questions about having been advised to do something non-vegan from a healthcare practitioner. What I say to this is, it's not about science, it's about philosophy. When somebody really believes that you're supposed to eat a paleo diet, we can come to that person as an activist and discuss it, but if we go to them for advice and they tell us to eat a paleo diet, that's what we're gonna get. It's like if I go to a priest for advice and solace and he says, go to confession and say five Hail Marys and I walk out and can you say, can you believe what that priest said to me? Well, that's what he's gonna say. That's what he does. So we wanna stay with people who get it when we're looking for advice and counsel. This is why I started Main Street Vegan Academy, to train people to be coaches and counselors for others wanting to do this. But when we're going out to shine our light, to show what we can do, to show what this way of life can do to change a physical body, to change a heart and soul, and to change the world for animals, we go up against anybody. And you know why we can do that? Because we're right, and we're not doing this for us. We're doing this for them. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. We need to be out. I'll be in the hallway. Everybody will be where they are. Come and find us. We love you. We need you.